Next up, I want to introduce a longtime friend and advocate. She is a former journalist, and she's the candidate right now, a candidate for Arizona State Representative. She doesn't ride a bike. Maybe she does. Uh, she wa is running to be a ca she's a candidate right now for the Arizona State to be an Arizona State representative of LD24. Please help me welcome Annalise Ortiz. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Arizona Talks, for having me today. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Like Carlos said, my name is Annalise Ortiz. I'm running for the Arizona House of Representatives in LD24. I'm a civil rights activist and a born and raised Arizonan. And I want to talk today about growing up brown in Arizona. The first time I ever experienced any kind of racism or prejudice or discrimination, I was only about four years old. And my mom had taken me to a prayer group of all places. And all the little kids were playing together outside. And at one point, I had gone inside, probably to get a drink of water or something. And when I came back out, I heard one of the older girls we were playing with, we'll call her Karen, say, oh no, here comes that little brown girl again. And at this time, I didn't really know or think about the fact that I was brown, but she said it with such disgust in her voice that I knew something was wrong. So I went back into the house and I sat by my mom's feet for the rest of the day. And one of the older ladies there knew something was wrong, so she gave me a rainbow-colored stuffed animal octopus to make me feel better. And I took that stuffed animal home, but every time I looked at that octopus, I got a pit in my stomach. I felt the same shame and embarrassment and confusion that I had felt on that day. I grew up with five siblings. One of them is here today. <laughs> and uh, Gabe can tell you that we were wild kids. We were always running around outside with no shoes on in the desert uh, with our hair a mess. And one day after I'd been playing outside, I came back in and our oldest brother, Joaquin, he said, look how dirty your feet are. And he grabbed a washcloth and he started washing my foot. And this sounds gross, but I watched the color change from a dark brown to a lighter brown. And that night I sat in the shower scrubbing my face hoping to make it lighter. And then when I was 10, something really weird happened. I got a white spot on my eyelid, and the white spot started to grow and grow. So my mom took me to the dermatologist, and the dermatologist told us that my immune system was attacking the melanin in my skin. I had a condition called vitiligo. And I remember being just 10 years old, so scared, thinking, that God must have been playing some kind of joke on me for not loving my brown skin enough. As you can imagine, it took some time to unlearn that kind of internalized insecurity. And part of what helped me overcome that was becoming an auntie to five beautiful brown girls. And I'm watching them grow up in their Arizona public schools. And I'm watching this debate that's going on right now in our country and in our state about a problem that doesn't exist, a problem that has been created to really divide us. It's this term called critical race theory, something that isn't taught and hasn't been taught in any K through 12 school. And I think about this phrase and the way it's being used to fear monger and divide us. And I am thinking about how important it is for young kids to be learning that racism and oppression does indeed exist in this country and that it should not be tolerated, but that we cannot dismantle it without talking about it. And what people really want, I know what I really want for my nieces and for other kids in schools, is to be, for them to be learning about Dolores Huerta, who with her brown skin led one of the most historic labor strikes to fight labor exploitation of farm workers. What we want is for young kids to be learning about the indigenous peoples who created the intricate canal systems that make Arizona livable today. What we want is for all kids to be learning about sojourner truth, 
who had the courage to say that the women's suffrage movement could not only be about white women's right to vote. What we want is for all kids to learn about people who look like them, and not just during Black History Month or Hispanic Heritage Month, but every single day. But unfortunately, there are adults in the room who are not being adults. There are adults in the room who are scared of white kids in particular, learning about the honest truth of history and of the ugly racism and violence and oppression that exists in our nation's history. I think that they're scared that that little Annalise that day would have treated Karen the same way that Karen treated her. And they're scared that Karen might feel uncomfortable learning about this stuff. But never mind all of the kids of color who are dealing with this kind of hurt and pain and trauma just because of the color of their skin every day. And my question is how can we ever expect our students to make sure that they grow up and not let history repeat itself if they don't learn that history in the first place? My question is when has this nation ever solved any problem by pretending it doesn't exist? That day at the prayer group, there was an adult in the room who tried to make me feel better. She knew something was wrong. She knew she had an opportunity to change it. She didn't know about the hurtful words, but she had a gesture of kindness. And so we have an opportunity right now to be adults in the room. We can fight against the bills being introduced at our state legislature that aim to ban books and ban history and censor history. We can stand up and refuse to vote for politicians who are using our kids as political ploys. We can make sure that we are having these uncomfortable conversations at our kitchen tables with our friends and family who have heard this phrase critical race theory on the news but don't know the truth of it. And we can make sure that all kids have safe spaces in their public schools, whether they are students of color or LGBTQ plus students who are also being attacked by our state legislature right now. My name is Annalise Ortiz and I'm running for the Arizona House of Representatives. And I believe that that little brown girl with her rainbow colored octopus would be pretty proud of how far she's come. Thank you so much.